Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Lydia. I hope that 2023 is treating you well so far. Today we're going to be painting for the love of birds. I'll go over the materials that you need to do the painting. Also, I will list those materials down in the description box below and I'll go through the painting with you step by step. Also, I'll provide a photo of the finished painting on my Instagram account at Lydia Pangborn Art. So grab your paints, your brushes, and I'll meet you back at the easel. The materials I'm going to be using today for this painting are a 16 by 20 inch stretched and primed canvas. You certainly can change the size if you'd like. The brushes I'm going to be using are a half inch flat brush. This happens to be a number eight pro stroke. You can go with um, a bright if you like or something a little bigger if you need to. I'm going to have a small round brush. This is an artist loft brush. Um, it's a number five. I'm going to use an old stiff bristle brush that's worn out that has come to slightly a point for some clouds. You certainly could use a brush that is specifically for putting clouds on. I just like to save old worn out brushes for this purpose. And I'm going to be using this as an option. You don't have to have this brush. It's a number one pro stroke brush and it's just to sign the painting with. You certainly could use your small round brush with that as well. I'm also going to be using just a piece of kids chalk to do a little bit of, of sketching. There's not a lot of drawing with this painting. The colors I'm going to be using today are acrylic paints in the colors of alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and these are all titanium white. You're going to want to have a jar or a cup of water to rinse your brushes, a paper towel or an old cloth for drying your brushes, and a mister bottle for keeping everything nice and damp as you work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it under painting on. I'm going to use my number eight pro stroke brush to do that, my flat brush, and I am going to get it wet. I'm just going to wet the bristles. So I'm going to come right up to where the ferrule of the brush is, just getting just the bristles wet and wipe some of that off. I have put a little bit of water on my canvas just to make sure everything blends a little better. I'm going to get some of this water off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a blue sky and I am going to have a pathway in the back. So I'm going to have my pathway work down at a diagonal. So I'm going to come to about my halfway point and maybe come up about an inch from there and make a little mark. Then I'm gonna come up to my halfway point here and come down maybe an inch and make a little mark there. So from here to here, I'm not gonna draw a line or anything right now. I'm just gonna use this as a guide to know where I'm going to put my sky. I want this sky to be blue mostly, but I'm gonna have a hint of the alizarin in it. So I'm gonna pull out some blue and I'm gonna pull over some of my titanium white. Mostly white, so a little more white than the blue. And then I'm going to come up here and just on the very corner of my brush, I'm going to get a little bit of my red. And I just dropped it in there and I'm just mixing that in and see how that looks. So it's a really pale blue with a hint of red to give it a slight purple hue. I'm going to get a little bit more of that red. I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to mix that in. And then once I get it mixed, I'm going to go ahead and press my brush into the paint so I can load that up really well. There's a lot of paint on my brush. And again, you can use a bigger brush. I'm just using this smaller one just so they don't have to use a lot of brushes in the tutorial, but you certainly could get a larger brush and work your way with a larger brush much quicker if you wanted to. And I'm just going to work with that same color all the way across the top of my painting. And again, I'm just making X strokes. Um, you can do just strokes straight across if you want. We're going to be putting clouds in, so it's okay if you do a little bit more of a, of a crazier sort of 
just cross the way strokes like this. We're just trying to get this first layer of paint on to cover the white of the canvas. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of this now that I kind of know where I wanna go with it. I'm just mixing a little more so I have plenty to work with. Get a little bit more of that red, quite a bit more white. This way I wanna be able to have enough just so I can just keep working. Press my brush down and just start to work. I'm gonna dip into my water just a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and get that top part of my sky blended across. And you get all of this paint off the brush so far. As I get more toward the horizon, I'm gonna continue to work with this color. So I wanna get a little bit more of my of Blizzard and Crimson. I just wanna make it a little warmer as I'm down closer toward the horizon and work that up. So I came over to this mark and the mark I made over here. Just work it the same way, just making those strokes, those broad cross strokes, X strokes, however you want to do, think about it. And this is just a nice soft sky soft blue and some hints of the red to give it a little purplish hue in some places. I just went and picked up a little more water and then start to blend this up into the area that I worked with earlier. And if you feel like your paint isn't covering, you certainly could always do a second coat. I'm gonna dip into my water just a little bit, wipe the excess off, and then just start to blend all the way from the bottom to the top. I'm gonna come right into this little mirror up the middle area. I feel like it just doesn't have enough coverage there. And once you get the sky the way that you like it, we're gonna go ahead and start working to get a base coat down in the bottom area as well. So now what I'm gonna do, I don't, I don't have a lot of paint left in my brush, so I'm just not gonna rinse it out, and I'm gonna come up here into my yellow, and I'm gonna come down and get some of the white that's down here in this first line and bring it up here. And then I'm gonna get some of the blue, I'm gonna go over here to the side, I like to pull away from my paint so that I don't contaminate it too much with the colors that are on my brush already. Let's see if I can make a nice little green here. It's mostly yellow with a little bit of the blue. And I'm gonna come down and grab some of my umber. I'm adding a little burnt umber to it. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of red just to warm it up a little. So I'm gonna start out just making random strokes. Some of them may be up and down, some of them may be side to side. I'm just really trying right now to get the coverage. And I'm gonna leave a little area right here between where the blue is and the green, and you'll see why in just a minute. And I'm just working just to get the paint coverage on my canvas. So I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a, quite a bit more of this color. So it's more yellow than blue, a little dot of the umber, and then a little dot of my alizarin. There we go. And I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna get a little water. And just blend a little bit, but I'm not really worried about it if it's not blending. We've got a lot of layers that we're gonna be doing with it, so especially when I get closer toward the bottom of the painting, I'm gonna have more of my strokes 
that are going to be more vertical than horizontal. And then down at the very bottom, I can start to just make these strokes more horizontal. Down here at the bottom, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I put a little bit more of the umber in my paint mix, just a little bit more, just so it'll be darker down here at the bottom. And in the beginning, this underpainting is going to look a little chaotic. And once I put that umber in there, down at the bottom, I'm gonna go back into just more of my more greenish colors and mix that in. You can use a bigger brush for this if you'd like, again, to get some better coverage, making all sorts of random strokes. But I just wanted to use a few brushes in the tutorial, but you can certainly make life easier for yourself just by using a bigger brush. Um, you can use a brush where you can make more circular motions if you like. You just have to find what works for you. And again, we're gonna have a lot of layers on the painting, so it's okay if you don't have full coverage in some spots. So if you can look, I've got some lighter spots, some darker spots, some spots that have more of a greenish uh, mix with that red. And what I'm gonna do in this area right here is I'm gonna take my red and pull, pull some up at the top. So I'm using alizarin crimson and my cadmium yellow. A little bit more yellow and then I'm gonna pull in some white. And I'm gonna use this to go across my path. And this is gonna be my little pathway. And some of this will get covered up. I'm not worried about that right now. And again, it's just to get some color where we want the blocks of color of what we're going to do. And I'm just trying to cover up some of the white of the canvas Some of this orange may end up disappearing once we start putting more greenery in. And there we go. So we have our base coat on our canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my flat brush, get it cleaned, put it away. And when we come back, we're gonna be using our brush that's a little bit used and abused or your cloud brush, whichever you've chosen to use to get some clouds in. So as I'm thinking about my composition of my painting, I've got some good angles going on with the lay of the land. And up here, I want my clouds to also have some interest. So I'm gonna have the clouds sweeping up from this side of the canvas all the way up to here on this side of the canvas at an angle. So I'll have an angle here, and then I'll have an angle leading from the grassy area down to where we'll have our birdhouse. So this technique for doing clouds, I've, I did before in the winter mountain retreat, I believe is what it was called. And um, if you haven't seen that one, uh, I'll put a link to that painting either up in a card up above or down below. But this is a dry brush technique. And so you want your brush to be quite dry. And if you want anything to have moisture in it, it would be the paint itself. So I'm going to come over to one of my clean areas of my white and I'm just going to get a few drops of water and I'm going to come over here and just drop a little bit of water onto my palette. So I just put some drips of water here, but I want to make sure that my brush is pretty dry. Not a lot of moisture in the brush at all. And if you feel like you need to map out maybe where you want your clouds to be, you can just, you know, create a few, um, an outline of where you might want a cloud formation to be. I know that I'm going to have some here kind of connecting, maybe not as many up high in this area and then bringing them back up, maybe into here. And you can always change it. If you don't like the way it looks, you certainly can take your blue and paint back over. So I'm going to bring my white paint over to where I put the drips of water on my palette and I just have 
the paint on the very tip of this scruffy looking brush and you want to put your paint down at the top of your cloud formation where you want it to be and you're going to press it in so you've got pretty good pressure on your brush and you're just going to start to make little tight circular motions and when you get the paint off that side of the brush you're going to come below so it just blends down a little bit and then you can turn it over and do the same thing here now instead of just using white so i wanted to show you that i'm going to add for this first part i'm going to add just a hint of my alizarin crimson and i'm going to bring it over here so it's a very very light pink color and I'm going to do that same motion. And we're going to go back in and put just the plain white all over the, the canvas where the clouds are later. But I like having a little bit of that pink color in there to, to start with. And you can have pockets of it so you have some of this darker blue that you put up here earlier showing through or if you don't like that you can certainly cover it up however you want to work it the great thing about clouds is they come in many shapes once the paint runs out on one side this is why you want to beat up brush for this or water I'm putting a few more drops of water in my paint you don't need to spend a lot of money on a brush to do this technique with. So I've got too much water. See how it's blending there? That's too much water in my brush. So when I went to add that little bit of water drips, so I just wipe some of the water off. And I'm just gonna keep going. And I'm gonna bring some of this white down into this area because I'm gonna have a little tree line through part of this area here. And each time I get a little bit of the paint loaded, I'm coming right to, down to where this little orange area is. Some of this will be, that will be covered up with trees and bushy looking things in just a little bit. And once you have your cloud formations the way that you like them, we're gonna rinse this brush out and we're gonna go back to our flat brush. And bring all of this little whiteness that's left on this brush all the way right up to that little area there. And we will be coming back up into these clouds and putting some more white in there a little later on. And maybe if we see an area that we don't like, we certainly can change it then. So I'm gonna clean this brush out and go back to my flat brush for the next step. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up a green, but that leans a little bit more to a blue-green color. And we're just gonna have some bushes, trees, whatever you think they may be called. We're gonna start along this top area of this orange and we're gonna put those in. So what I'm gonna do is pulling down some of my ultramarine blue and I'm gonna get some yellow the cad yellow and i'm going to add this yellow a little bit at the time to my blue this time because i want this to be cooler and then i'm going to pull in some of this white and to make it look a little bit more natural i'm going to pull in some umber I want a little bit more umber than that 
Let's see what this looks like. That's a little too much umber, so I'm gonna pull some of my blue down. And a little bit more of the yellow. There we go. And then I want it to be a little bit lighter than that, I think. Let's see what that looks like. All right, yes, so I like that. So it has a almost a turquoise look to it, but with a hint of an earthy feel to it. And I've got my brush. I'm making, again, the way that I did down here, I'm just tapping in some colors. And I'm gonna make this tree line angle down and get a little bit shorter when it gets to here. So it'll be the shortest here and then taller over on this side. And I'm gonna bring it down to where it meets this area here. And I have the orange there on purpose because I'm gonna leave some of that showing through here in spots. And I'm also gonna have a little path that I'm gonna clear the way for probably right along in here. Make this side a little taller, and then we're gonna start to shorten everything here. And it looks a little wild and crazy right now. And I'm gonna leave a gap right here. And when we come back in and put the white in on our clouds, we'll be able to cover some of that up. And I'm just making all sorts of brush strokes here. I'm gonna make this a little higher and get a little bit more water because I can feel my paint's not flowing off my brush the way I like it. There we go. And I'm and it's sometimes I'm pressing down, sometimes I'm just going a little bit more light on the touch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to work back in this area from the back. It's going to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm not rinsing my brush out. I'm going to pick up some of my yellow and pull it off to the side over here. And let's see if I mix that in. What's on my brush is this color we mixed up earlier. I might come down and pick up a little bit of that and put it in because it's got some of that burnt umber in there and I'm just going to go ahead and start to create. I'm going to add a little white to that and I'm just going to create what looks like a lighter area of a pathway back here and I am just pretty much just scumbling it in Get a little bit of water and just kind of so I picked up a little water and I'm just going to brush this out right into here. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add a little bit more blue to this color. And I'm just going to start to make a little area that's a little flatter toward the back. So when the grasses get closer, they're going to get a little bit more, they're going to be dark down in the corners and they're going to get a little bit darker. And everything's fairly close in this painting, so I don't want too much to get lost on keeping some of the, the blue color here. And I know right now it looks like a craziness. And as we get closer, I'm actually going to go down and pick up some of the burnt sienna and bring it up here. I'm gonna get a little water Mix that into a little bit of the yellow. And I'm gonna add a little bit of my ultramarine blue to it. So that it becomes, get some of my white. Let's see what that looks like. A little more blue. There we go. So I want this to be more on the green side. And I'm gonna pick up just a hint 
of the red just to give it a little bit more of some variation. Put a little bit more blue in that. That's just a little, there we go. And I'm gonna have variations of green coming forward. So I'm gonna add a little more blue and yellow together and just start to mix that in. So again, it's really random. We're not putting in the details yet and this painting is gonna be a little bit more on the impressionistic side anyway, although we will have some grasses that will pop up even more. Okay, so it's just a mix of colors and I know that I want my birdhouse is going to be hiding the pole will be here and it'll be coming up into this area here. So I'm gonna make this area here a little darker. So I'm gonna take my burnt umber and I'm gonna bring it up here, bring some blue in and some yellow. And I'm gonna to start to put in some of these darker greens. I'm gonna need a little bit more water. So I'm gonna drip a little water into my paint here. There we go, so it flows a little better. some of this darker green on this side as well. I'm gonna add a little more yellow to all of this and just start mixing in some of these. Put a little blue in that. But there's a lot of different variations of the greens. So there's lighter greens, darker greens, some of the redder greens because the red and the green are opposite on the color wheel, so that makes it look a little bit more dark. white there. I don't want anything so white down here. A little bit more of that reddish color there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my flat brush again and we're going to come back and work on the clouds. So we're going to put some white highlights on the top of our clouds using our little scruffy brush. All right, so I've got my little happy little scruffy brush here and it's pretty dry. And I want to do just the white this time. So I'm gonna come over here to this little white line that I haven't touched yet. And I want to start to look at my clouds and decide what I like, what I might wanna to add to. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more of this cloud coming up higher here. And then maybe a little bit more white through here because I'm going to put a little white covering here and I may even add a little bit more blue. I put the orange here because I like the thought of having some orange flecks coming through my trees. A lot of it will be covered up as we do more and more of the layers of the trees but I'm going to try to leave some of it coming through as I'm painting and then maybe over here I may add a few more top highlights to all of these clouds to bring them out a little more. So, so I'm going to dip straight into my white and I've got the paint on the tip of the brush and I'm going to put this here and I just wanna bring this up as though it's coming a cloud that's going almost off the top. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this, so bear with me for a second. I'm just gonna lift this up and I wanna bring this up here so it, I don't leave that white line on the top of my canvas, there we go. 
I'll set that there, right? And I'm gonna keep going to where I think, so I'm coming straight back into my white paint. I think I'm gonna come here and just put some of those highlights there. So the brighter whites, just bringing those clouds out a little bit more here. And now that I know where the trees are, as I'm working, I'm gonna put a little bit more brightness here. I do like working with putting clouds in because it's just such a, it's almost like a, a random thing where you go and you, you put it down. Sometimes it doesn't go exactly where you think you want it to go and that's okay. Clouds are just fun that way. Now that I know where my tree line is, I'm gonna keep working some of this white down into here. I'm gonna leave this little formation lower. I don't want it to come all the way off my canvas on this side. Because we're gonna have the birdhouse over here. But I do want to have some cloud formations above the birdhouse. And I'm not covering up all the other colors. So you can see I kept the blue at the top and then these, the reddish purple color down at the bottom. And I'm gonna come back to my white that has that little bit of the alizarin in it. I'm just gonna come down into here. A little bit more alizarin in there. Let's see what that looks like. That maybe, yeah. There we go. And then picking up a little bit more white through here. There we go. And we'll be working some trees coverage into that. And I like having that orange underneath that just to bring my eye back there a little bit. And then what I can do is add just a few tiny clouds here. And once you get the clouds the way that you like them, you have it in a formation that is pleasing to you, we're going to rinse this brush out and we are not, I don't think gonna use this brush anymore. So I'm gonna clean it out and we're gonna to start to work with our small round brush to come in and get some more detail on our trees. So I want to settle my little trees in a little bit back here. So I'm going to have a little darker color working at the base quite a bit and then spread that out through the tops of the trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and I'm going to come over to my alizarin and I'm going to drop some alizarin in it. So this is a purplish color, not quite as purple as what you would get out of the tube. And I'm gonna add just a drop. I don't want too much yellow because it's gonna turn it muddy. And I am gonna add just a little yellow to that, a little yellow. And I'm gonna come in and just start putting that at the base of my trees and maybe pulling just some of it up. And again, I'm not making any specific stroke. My brush is damp. And I may leave some of them lighter so as though there's maybe a taller line of trees poking out back somewhat in the back there. And I'm gonna just kind of scumble that down in the bottom here because we're gonna work on that a little more. And then I'll just continue to work in the same way. And I am not doing any sort of 
special stroke. I'm just doing a lot of just moving my hand around, maybe as though I'm doing some writing with my hand. And I'm still showing little bits of that orange through there. And here's where I can refine a little bit more of this area here. I picked up a little bit more water. I'm just gonna to continue to do the same thing, getting along the base of the trees. This isn't our final say of the trees, so not to worry. All right, so I'm gonna get that paint out of my brush. So once I get the blue paint out of my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and get some indication of where I actually want my pathway to be back here. So I'm mixing up some of my burnt sienna and I'm gonna pull in a hint of the yellow, and a little bit more yellow than that. And then I'm gonna pull out some of my titanium white. I think I want to go a little lighter than that. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. That's what I want. So I'm going to bring that back here and I am just going to scoot it down so it's coming down this way. And maybe there's a little area back here where some of the path might can go up around some of these other tree areas as well. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more. I'm not going to clean my brush out. I'm going to pull some white up here and roll what paint is on my brush out and then go ahead and just start putting some light strokes in there. A little bit more of that. There we go. I like that better. So I put a little bit more of this color back into it, this burnt sienna hint of yellow color. It's almost just like a little pathway just leading down the hill, just like the tree line. And you can tell it kind of goes up behind the trees there. Let's see, is this dry? So I'm going to go back and put my highlights on my tree. So I'm going to get this brush rinsed out, get all of the orange burnt sienna yellow color out and I am going to come up here to my yellow and I'm going to add a little bit of blue at the time. And I'm just going to hit some of these. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to hit some of these. I don't want it to be too yellow. I'm going to knock this back a little bit. I added a little more blue. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my red here. There we go. So I'm knocking that back a little bit. I don't want it too bright back here, but I do want to hit some highlights on my trees. And you can still see bits of the orange back there as well. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my blue. There we go. And we're just giving the, the impression of trees. We're not 
trying to define every branch. So we're going to let this dry. We'll probably add one more light layer to it, but I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the rest of the seam here and get some more grasses pulled up. And we are going to work the, the grassy area with our flat brush again. So I'm cleaning out my small round brush. So we're back and I want to get a little bit of this area back here. It's going to be green, but I want to bring some of those little light pink areas that are in, in my clouds. I want to bring some of that into my little grassy area, just a tiny bit. So I am going to go ahead and bring in, now that we're getting closer, I want a little bit more of my cadmium yellow and the blue. I'm going to go ahead and add some of my alizarin to that. Pulling in a little bit more of the yellow. So it's, it's a, an earthy, reddish yellow with a hint of blue color to it. Let's see what that looks like. And I am going to put that right here in the middle ground mixed in a little bit more with this area. That's more, so I have a flatter area back here which we're going to do a little bit with. And then I have this area that looks more like grasses. And I am just making strokes, some of my strokes I use the whole brush and some of them I may be just pulling down on the edge of the brush. I'm going to add a little more blue to that. So I just pulled in a little bit more of my blue and I'm just going to start to work over to this area on this side. That's going to be behind my little birdhouse. Just want to make sure you get some good coverage there. And a little bit more water. There we go. And then I'm going to hold off on this little front area because we're going to put some, we're going to use our small round brush to get some grassy areas down here. And I'm going to come back up in here. And I'm going to pull in a little bit more of my cadmium yellow. And I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to this little green area I have going here. Let's see what that looks like. I want it to be a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my white. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Here we go. And this is going to be mostly my area that, that looks a little further back. So I'm keeping my strokes more just straight across, more horizontal. And every now and then I may add a little bit of a up down stroke. Get a little bit more of that color on my brush and just sweep it across. So it's like a, a field that's leading into some of my front grassy areas. area and make it look like it's curving in back there a little more. And maybe some areas here where there may be a little bit of that going on. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, while my brush still has some of this green left in it, I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow and I'm just going to take the one corner of my brush and maybe I'll just hit a few of these little yellow places especially up around where my path is leading back here. Just gonna, it's almost like I'm dotting on a few of these little yellow areas here. 
Just having some fun. And these are gonna stay more toward the tops of the bushy areas. And then I'm going to pull in a little bit more blue, some white. Just get a little bit more of that white in there. Some of that yellow and blue. So it's a lighter green area or a lighter. So it's a green, lighter green. I want it to be a little bit more green than that. There we go. And I'm just dotting some of those in certain places. And I still have some of those little orange spots that I put in, in the very beginning showing through. And then over here, we won't see as much of this side or I won't go to it as much because of the birdhouse being there. And it's a very light touch in most places. I may press down a little harder in other areas. And then I didn't rinse my brush out. I'm gonna come over to my white and I'm just gonna start to put a little bit more burnt sienna in that though. So I'm gonna pull some burnt sienna into my white and just start to... I'm gonna mix a little burnt sienna and a hint of the alizarin and just start to push that back into here a little bit. There we go. And I'm just keeping my strokes horizontal as I bring it down my pathway there. I do want this side to be a little taller in the tree area back here. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit with some lighter green area there. I want it to be taller than this side. There we go. That's better. And then I'll work some of that up over there. Just refining a little bit of areas that have thin look, looking paint on them a little bit. I'm going to clean out my flat brush now and we're going to come back with a small round brush and our chalk and we'll work on getting in our birdhouse. Okay now for the exciting part we're going to draw in our birdhouse and I have my little sample here and it's just going to be pretty much rectangles that you're going to draw. So you'll have a rectangle for the birdhouse itself a long rectangle for the pole that it sits on and then the roof and we'll go through that as we're working. So I'm going to decide where I want my birdhouse to be. So I'm going to bring my birdhouse maybe down about two inches and over about three inches. I'm going to put a little just a little dot there so I know. And then I am going to draw from that dot a straight line back maybe about an inch or so. And I'm going to go ahead, I want to go ahead and create the width of my birdhouse. So I'm going to create an angled line for the rooftop here and an angle lined for the rooftop there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. My, my birdhouse here, I intentionally had it leaning back slightly. Um, you can make it any way you want. If it doesn't turn out perfect, it's okay because it adds a little bit more character to your painting. So the, a few things to remember is that However the angle is that you create on this line, you want the one that goes to the back of the birdhouse for the rooftop to also be at about the same angle. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and just come in slightly off of that bottom part of my upside down V here. I'm gonna draw it out just a little more and then I'm gonna come in, try to be about the same on this side. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to come in just a little bit off this V and do another straight line. 
And then I'm gonna bring these two lines down a little bit more and just connect them. And so from there, you can see that these two lines are pretty much parallel with each other. And then with this line, I'm gonna to draw to there and this line I'm gonna to draw to there. So I just connected those bottom lines and we'll, we'll be able to put in all of our little shadows to make things look a little thicker. We're just doing the line drawing for now and we'll have a little heart shape here. And we're gonna have just a little thicker area here. I'm not gonna really put that in too much, but we'll have a thicker, thicker area here that we'll color in with our paint. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull for it to rest on and I'm gonna make it a little thicker pull. So I'm gonna put one part of the pole on this side and the other part of the pole on this side. So maybe about almost halfway in on this side and just almost halfway in on that side. And then we can have like the thickness of it here, like making it a little bit more thick. So there'll be another line off the side there so you can see that. All right, and we'll adjust as we go. I'm not worried about the chalk lines. I'm not worried about it being perfect because we're going to paint it in as we go. So I'm gonna set this out of the way and we're gonna be using our small round brush to get the base of the birdhouse filled in. All right, so I'm taking my small round brush. I did dip it in the water and I'm gonna do a base of um, more of a purple color mixed up with my blue and my alizarin crimson and I'm gonna do that for the whole birdhouse just to get it filled in. So I'm gonna take some blue and some alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna mix it up so it's a pretty dark color. And I may add just a little bit of my white. More blue and the crimson. There we go. And I'm just gonna start to fill it in. And I'm gonna make up and down strokes on the birdhouse part itself. Just filling in where my pencil lines are. And this is where I can start to adjust anything that I need to adjust. And in order to get the wood grain look of your birdhouse, you do need to have a dark color underneath before we do the final white weathered look to it. So this is just our base coat. Here's where I can straighten up my line a little bit if I need to. I'm gonna leave a little gap right in there for now to know where the side and the front are. down to my pole, do the same thing. Just gonna mix up a little bit more of this color because I need some more. I'm gonna add a little bit more white, just a little bit more so that I know where this part of the pole that changes to the front part of the pole is in my mental awareness here. And again, we're gonna be adjusting some grasses down here. And I'm gonna use that same lighter color, but I, want, I still don't want it to be too light, but I'm gonna go on top of the birdhouse with this lighter color. 
So I just added some white. And I can take that down into this area that I left clear, just so I know where the differences are. All right, we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna rinse my brush out. We're gonna start doing a little bit more detail in the grassy area here while this is drying. So I'm gonna pull out my yellow and my blue because I want a little more green. I'm gonna add some alizarin crimson to make it darker. I'm actually gonna come over here to some of my umber and pull that in as well. Let's see what that looks like. All right. So I want to get this pretty wet so it flows off my brush. So I did blue, yellow, a little alizarin, and a little bit of my umber. So it should create a nice green and I made it pretty wet. And I'm just going to start pulling up some taller grasses here. So this paint mixture has to be pretty wet on your brush and I'm going to start by just keeping some of the ones down in this area a little shorter but the ones on the side a little darker and this is the beginning of getting some really good grasses in and we're going to do some that are a little bit more blue than green in just a little bit but I just want to get some of these pulled up and get the bottom part of my painting kind of filled in down here Need to get some more water in my paint. So I'm gonna pull up a little better. And you can't really see some of these, but we're going to add a little bit more yellow and blue and just start pulling in some. And we're gonna be using our other brush in just a little bit to add a little bit more grasses. We'll be using our um, flat brush in just a little bit. I'm just trying to get some of this lower area filled in with some of these grasses. And I'll get down in the bottom of my painting here where I've got these bare spots and pull up some areas here. Then I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. I'm going to come in and just hit some light areas in some spots here. Mix in a little bit of blue and just come in. There we go. And this is just filling in some of these blank areas. So what I want to do is I'm going to get this green out of my brush. You have to give that a little bit more time to dry. I want to add just a little bit more to my path. So I'm going to take some of my yellow and my white. I'm going to add just a hint of blue. I'm taking yellow white. I added a dot of blue. And then I'm going to pull in some of my sienna. I'm going to add a little bit of umber. I want this to be a little darker, but I don't want it to be too dark. There we go, I like that better. And that's kind of giving me a nice natural look. And I'm not trying to cover up everything that I did back here. I'm just trying to put a few variations of the color. So I did a little burnt umber, a little burnt sienna, some yellow a hint of the red and white. I like having a little bit of the yellow in there because it's gonna pop against this post that I have. It's gonna have an underpainting of the purple. And I'm going to take a little bit more yellow to this color. 
I'm gonna add a hint of the alizarin. So I just put a little hint of the alizarin, burnt umber. And there's a hint of blue in there as well. There we go. I've got some areas back here. And I'm just gonna hit, this has got a little bit of the lighter, need to be a little bit more blue, there we go. It's a little blue in there. So I've got blue, a little hint of yellow, a little burnt sienna, a little umber, and I pulled in just a little bit of white. And I'm just going in and just hitting places back here. Mixing into the screen. I'm going to add blue and a burnt sienna just coming here. There we go. I'm going to be adding some tall, tall grasses in just a little bit. Anywhere where you feel like there's like some missing color where you're, you've got some white showing through and you want to add a little bit more to it, you can. Let's see if this is dry yet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my brush out and we're gonna go ahead and start working on getting in the detail on our birdhouse. So I'm gonna take some of this color that I had for the base of the birdhouse and I'm gonna make it even lighter. And you can decide where you might want your little opening to be. It can be just a circle. I made it a heart shape there, make it a little and again, you can shape up your heart as you go. But I'm going to take this color now that I've put quite a bit of white into it. And I'm going to wipe some of it off, some of the color off. I don't want too much on my brush. And I'm just going to start sweeping this just down. And it'll give it a nice weathered would look. And the paint's still a little wet that's there, so that's okay. We're just going to go over it again with some more white in just a little bit. We can start to figure out where our shadows are going to be. And I'm just making strokes that are vertical because you want to make sure you go in the direction of what you think the wood is going to look like. And then I'm going to go even a little more white for the rooftop here. to my purple color and I'm going to kind of straighten this line up a little bit and if you get the texture of the canvas coming through that's great because it kind of gives it that wood look. And I don't want to go so this side and this side so this side of the birdhouse and this side of my wood that's holding it are going to be a little darker than the front so I'm going to keep it a little bit more of the blue purple color. White. Maybe. 
straighten that up a little bit. Okay. Noticeable under here. See if I can fill in the little heart shape here a little better so we can see it. It's starting to come together. Get that little dark area there. All right, so we need to let that dry a little more. I'm gonna rinse my brush out and we're gonna go to our flat brush to pull up all of our tall grasses. All right, so I have my painting brought forward. I have my flat brush and I am going to pull up what would be mostly blue grasses, but I'm gonna have a little bit of yellow in there. So it's mostly blue and a hint of yellow, because I want these to be a little bit more vibrant. And I'm gonna press my brush into my paint so I flatten out the very tip of my brush to a chiseled edge. And I'm just gonna start to pull. I have a very light touch, and I'm just pulling some of these tall grasses up, and I'm gonna bring them up so that they will come almost up to the line of the trees in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So again, I'm loading my brush up mostly blue with a little yellow. And I'm doing this while my birdhouse is still a little tacky to the touch. So Make sure that it dries. And I'm going to come up to the very base of my birdhouse here and pull it up so that this looks like the grass is growing naturally around my birdhouse. Do some of this on the side as well. The grass is in here. I'm going to keep a little shorter, the ones here so that our eye can shoot back to our opening back there on the pathway. Just a little bit more water. If your paint isn't flowing out the brush, then you'll just add a little bit more water to it. Again, I'm trying to get my chiseled edge here. And here, I'm going to turn my brush this way and just pull up some of these middle bushes or middle grasses and make sure that I have everything settled down in the base of my painting. A few more tall ones over on this side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our small round brush. We're mixing a little alizarin crimson and some white and some green. So we're taking some blue and yellow and mixing it in. Blue and yellow. So it's a really pale green color. And I'm going to add a little burnt umber to that. So I'm trying to make a reddish green color. And I'm gonna lightly drop it in to certain spots. Now, if you drop it in and you don't like where you drop it in, and I'm dropping it between some of these grasses, you can always go back and add more grasses in. But it's gonna bring some of this alizarin color and the alizarin color that's in the sky into the foreground. Now, I don't want too much of it, but I do want enough to pull my painting together. And I can even take some of it. I have very little of it on my brush now. 
and maybe put it back here on this green. It's almost like a, a little wash of color. It's gonna pull everything together a little better. And if you find that you've got straight lines anywhere, like I feel like along in here, it's just a little straight line. So maybe I can put some of it there to kind of clear out the straight line. I can even bring some of it back here at the tops of these trees to set these back a little bit, the very top, and I can add some of it down into these areas to create some depth. And this color will guide your eye as well to your birdhouse. I feel like that's a straight line there, so I do want to fix that. This is where you start to take your artistic license and see where you can maybe bring some depth and I may even take a little bit of that and I want it to be a little bit more on the yellow red side it's not a little bit of a lizard and take what's on my brush and maybe even just hit some of it along my pathway here And always take a moment to step back from your painting and see what you got going on. Put a little bit down in here. And I'm going to come back to my flat brush and with that in my jar and come back in to my yellow and green or my yellow and blue to make my green. I'm just going to put few more of those low grasses in here. And maybe I'll just hit that around in here as well. Just a very loose painting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. This is getting dry. I want to get these chalk lines off first, but I have to make sure it's dry. So I'm going to give it a few more minutes to dry. So I'm going to rinse out my brush. We're going to come back. We'll be using our small round brush when we get back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish up getting our bird house in. I'm going to my small round brush and I'm going to use it dry. So I want this brush to be dry. I'm going to come into my white paint. And I can mix a little bit of the bird house color into it, but I don't want too much. And remember, this is a dry brush. And we're going to come down. I'll start on um, the front side because I want the front side to be a little lighter. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to leave a little area underneath. And I'm very lightly just dragging my brush down. And this is an old weathered birdhouse. So I'm not worried about perfection in the wood grain. And then I go right up to where I think my edge is on the front side. And I'm going to blend this out up here because I want a shadow under there and we can put a little shadow in in just a minute if, it, if I get rid of too much of it. And I'm also going to leave a little bit of a shadow under here. So I'm going to draw a little diagonal there, I think. Maybe that's too high up. Let me go down just a little bit more there. And I am going to come from there with my dry brush coming on what would be the front part of the pole that this is resting on. So 
So I've got the purple and the crimson there. I want that to be a little darker and the rest of it's going to be a little lighter. I might want to go even just a little darker there. A little crimson in the mixture there. And then I'm going to take my white Just, I'm lightly pulling it down and you can see the grain in the canvas and it gives it that nice little weathered wood look. And this side is going to be a little darker, but before I do that, I still want to kind of go over this a little bit more with my white. I'm going to come back in and create that shadow under there and redefine my heart. Just feel like this needs to be a little more weathered. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my quinacridone magenta and blue to the white that's on my brush. And I'm going to put that on this side. So this is more the front side getting a little more light. I want this to be a little lighter and I'm going to come in and create some thickness in my rooftop first. So I'm mixing up some more of this. I'm working with just the quinacridone magenta and the blue. And there's a little white still left on my brush. And I just want to, I've actually flattened out this round brush a little bit. You certainly could use a filbert or a flat brush, but I want to give a little bit of thickness to the rooftop there. And I'm going to do the same thing, see if I can keep my hand out of the way. Here. There we go. And also just a little thickness. It's not going to, we're not going to be able to see as much of this angle of the rooftop, but I'm going to be on the very edge of the brush and brush in a bit of an angle here. There we go. Starting to look a little bit more like a birdhouse. I'm going to go redefine. I'm taking this dark color, add a little bit more blue to it. I'm going to go ahead and redefine my heart shape. So I think I actually have lost it quite a bit. Right in the middle there. And I'll come back and fix that a little bit more in just a minute. I'm going to go over to this side and it's still going to be lighter here but not as light as that side so this is going to be the darker side let's see if i can make sure that this stays and i'm going to leave a little line underneath the rooftop so it's there's like the rooftops covering up the shadow or it's creating a shadow underneath i need a little bit more white here And I'm going to get just some white on my brush and come right down. It just came along the edge there so that I can start to make sure that I have enough on the front side to say that this is the front. So I'm just taking my white and dipping my brush right into the white. Pick up a little bit of my 
thumber and darken that. I just want this to be a little darker. And then I'm going to put a little bit of that darkness under here. And just a little bit of that. A little bit of refine there. And the darkness over here. I have that darker color, so I just add a little burnt umber to my mixture there. And I'm going to add some white to this mix and come down on this side and do the same thing. Keeping it a little darker on this side though, because so this has a little bit of that umber mix into it. This is the more shadow side. All right, I'm standing back and looking at it, and that's looking good. I want to make this little area here a little thicker down here. This is like the base that it's sitting on, and a little brighter on this side. And now what I want to do is I want to get some of this rooftop wood. Come on there. Just kind of brush some of that down. I've rinsed the paint out of my small round brush. I'm just gonna do a few light highlights with mostly a mix of yellow, white, and a little bit of my burnt sienna. And I just wanna put a little, just a little highlight back here, just so my eye can go back there to that pathway. Just a little bit, and then I'll bring some of those little bright colors forward so the eye comes to my birdhouse and then I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that same mixture and just maybe hit a few areas not at the very bottom but breaking up some of this green just a little bit maybe just a little bit right in here so that your eye Just putting a little bit of this yellow here and there. I don't want too much of it, but I do want to have my eye come up around my, there we go. All right, so you have the option if you'd like, you could take, if you'd like, before you sign your painting, if you wanted to, you could put a few birds in the sky. So I'm gonna zoom you in and we're gonna put three birds, just very distant. They're not gonna be detailed birds. They're just gonna be little indications of birds up here. All right, so I've got you zoomed in and I'm gonna put little birdies right in this area. So I'm gonna do three and think about it as just two little curved lines. So I'm just gonna use my umber, Let's see if I can get a little hint of blue in there. Just want a nice little dark color. And I got a little pointed brush. So I'm gonna have just a little dot and then two little curved lines, and maybe one that's further back, so a little dot. Two little curved lines, and one more dot, and two little curved lines. And it looks like they're coming toward the birdhouse. All right, I'm using light green, and I'm gonna sign it 
over here. All right, and we're done. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had fun and created something special for yourself. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.